Hey, Shalom. I'm Brother Jordan from uh, Straightway Praise Land. And the date is June 30th, 2024. And I'm making this video in regards of a lot of information that's been coming out about what it's like here at Straightway Praise Land underneath the leadership of Elder Kabir. And I just wanted to talk about what it's like here. Um, you guys may have heard that we only get $50 a month per person. And if we do something wrong on the community, that we are fined financially out of that $50 per person per month. Now, these things are true. And also, uh, you may have heard that we bow down to Elder Kabir when we see him to greet him. And this is also true. But I want to talk about what you probably haven't heard. From the aspect of us being given $50 a month per person, it may not seem like a lot, but I have a whole list here of the things that we don't have to pay for out of that $50 a month per person. So for me and my family, it's me, my wife, and I have a son. So we get $150 per month per per or per per our family, right? Out of that, we have access to Netflix, Amazon, Apple TV, HBO Max. We don't have to pay for any of those subscriptions. I can go down in the theater anytime that I want and uh, watch whatever shows that I want. We have an Xbox. I can go play games whenever I want to. Um, we have a, a gym in the house that I don't have to pay for. I don't have a membership to go and work out. I can work out anytime that I want. Uh, we also have a gymnasium. I can play basketball. I can run around the gym. We have a pool. We have a hot tub. Uh, those are the things that I don't have to pay for. I've never had to pay for um, a phone bill. I've never had to pay for any uh, sort of medical insurance or anything like that. Um, yeah, so people say that Eller Kabira is maybe tyrannical or that uh, the people here are being oppressed. I'm a witness. I've been here since 2018 and Eller Kabir has shown nothing but love to me and to my family and to the brothers who lived here since, since I've been here. I've never seen anything that's wicked or that's wrong in, in really any way. And uh, anytime that I've had a problem, I have never felt like I couldn't come to Elder Kabir and talk to him about it. And you can call him and ask him. I've, I've come to Elder Kabir quite a few times about quite a few things. And most of the time, I'm just wrong. And there has been times where may, maybe I would have been right about uh, a situation, but it's never been a situation where I felt like I'm being so oppressed, I'm not being heard, that I need to leave or I need to have somebody come and save me. So other things, you know, that are paid for by the community is I run the the business Royal Interiors here. We, we have a drywall and plaster business, right? So this truck that I'm sitting in is paid for by the community. The trailer that I take to work is paid for by the community. The the boots and, and the work clothes that I, that I wear is paid for by the community. I mean, I, I wear a $50 pair of pants to work and when they get holes in them or something like that, I put it on an Amazon list and Elder Kabir buys us another pair. I could go right now to Rogan Shoes and buy a $200 pair of boots, which I, I have a 200 pair of boots that I use. And I, and I could just go with the with a community card and go and buy myself a pair of boots, make sure Elder Kabir gets the receipt. I, I don't I don't see how that is <laughs> oppression. I mean, uh, other things with the, within the community. I got married a few years ago. I didn't pay for anything when it came to the marriage. I didn't pay for my garment. I didn't pay for the food. I didn't pay for even making the cards that we sent out to people. I didn't pay for any of that out of my uh, community allowance. So, I mean, when I look at my community allowance, it's really for things that Elder Kabir doesn't necessarily need to micromanage for you to buy. Like say I wanted to get my wife a new dress or something like that. I could use that for, I could use my allowance to get to get her a new dress. Or I wanted to get some new clothes for my son. I could do that. But the thing is, is we have food and we have raiment. And so it's very easy to be content here at Praise Land. I would say the biggest problem that we have here at Praise Land, or I guess the temptation that we have, is being uh, content with the abundance of stuff that we have and, and being grateful 
for all of the blessings that Yah gives us and not becoming uh, so blessed that we forget about the Most High in Himself. I mean, within this community, we have an abundance of food. I've, I don't think I've ever had a time, maybe we had one time where there wasn't food in the fridge because of a miscommunication, whatever. But that was brought to Elder Kabir and he he solved the problem immediately. We used to have a problem here uh, before, uh, a few years ago, the sisters used to make the brothers who would go to work, they would make them their lunches, right? And our problem was, is the sisters would be making us lunches and we wouldn't be eating the lunches. Our problem is that we don't have enough food and that we're starving here. The problem, is, the problem we've had is that we have too much food in our shelf and then it gets bad and then we got to throw it away. So <laughs> it, it's kind of crazy to me, the things that people <laughs> are saying. I mean, I have a son, right? So diapers, wipes, anything that has to do with my son's needs is paid for by the community. We have a $1,000, I think it's over $1,000 for our stroller paid for by the community. We have a crib paid for by the community. I have a nice room. I have a, a, a really nice bed paid for by the community. Um, what are the other things that we ha I have in here? We have a barbershop, right? All the stuff within the barbershop paid for by the community. We have a brother, Brother Elijah. He cuts hair very, very nicely. He cuts my, I never pay for a haircut. I just go to Brother Elijah. Boom, he cuts the hair. Alcohol. We have a $300 a week budget for alcohol. The video got cut off, sorry. So I was saying we have a $300 a week budget for alcohol. So, but with that, we're only allowed to drink four days out of the week. We're oppressed, aren't we? Um, Some of the other things that I wanted to say on here too is, uh, you know, when I first came into the community of Praise Land, I had terrible teeth and I went to a doctor when I was still living in Illinois before I moved here and they were pretty much saying we're going to have to remove all your teeth. You're going to have dentures, X, Y, and Z, right? So Elder Kabir gets wind of this information and he's like, nah, I, you know, I'm not going to, I wouldn't do that for myself. So I'm not going to do that for my brother. So he brings me to his dentist, which was a very good dentist. I think he, uh, I, th I think he's a dentist for a lot of the Green Bay Packer uh, players, right? And so they did work on my teeth. It, it, it cost like $9,000 for me to get my teeth back back in, uh, back in to repair. And that was paid for by the community. And then I think I, I had an abscess tooth. And so then there had to be uh, a little bit more work done. So it, it's been over $10,000 what the, the community has had to pay just to restore my teeth to get them back to, back to normal. And, you know, at... At Praise Land here, like, I don't pay for my own soap. I don't pay for my toothpaste. Like, there, there's pretty much no need that isn't, there isn't, there is no need that isn't being met here at Praise Land. Every, everything that, all right, what I was saying is there is no need that is not getting met here at Straightway Praise Land. And as for the topic of bowing down to elder and, you know, you see in the word that angels wouldn't even allow uh, people to bow down to them. You know, nobody here is forced to pay obeisance to Elder. Nobody. The reason why I do it is Elder Kabir and TJ, they went to Nigeria. They came back. They went to Straightway. And I seen Elder Kabir do it for Pastor Dow. And so I said, okay, well, if, if he's going to do it for Pastor Dow, I should do it for my Elder. Let me just follow the lead of what my Elder is doing. And it was already in my heart to do that anyways, because we see it in the word. I mean, when... When Moses went and he talked with his father-in-law, he went and paid obeisance. And when you look behind that word, it's bow down. So it's not some sort of foreign thing that like, oh, you're bowing down to man and you're you're worshiping man. I'm not worshiping Elder Kabir at all. I, I just respect him as being my elder. And I say within myself, if I can do this for Elder Kabir, certainly I can do it for Jesus. And so I do it with a consciousness towards Jesus, you know, and I, I've heard that you know, the ministry is leading towards uh, making people slaves. And and you're and you're going to see it um, that these leaders, they just want people to to be their slaves. And I, I'm sitting here thinking like, OK, if this is slavery and I read all the benefits of what I have here, like that's some damn good slavery. One, I don't think that I'm Elder Kabir's personal slave here. Um, I mean, I've been here for a while. If I were to all of a sudden decide to leave, I don't think you'd be like, well, 
you know, we gave you your woman while you were here and, you know, she's got to stay and, and, and you got to go. You know, that's what the word says. You know, you were a slave and you came in and then we gave you a woman and now you have a woman and a child that belongs to me. I don't think that he would say that. And I don't even worry about him saying that because I, I don't even think of ever leaving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So to to me, to me, it's crazy. To me, it's just a, it's a whole bunch of nonsense, honestly. Um, especially what I've been hearing about this uh, community. I mean, anybody who's been here, they know that, all, I mean, all the saints, nobody, nobody's underweight. My wife, when she first came here, she was 70 pounds. She was, she was underweight. She was starving. And since she's been here, she's 130 pounds now. So if our needs aren't being met, you help me, you tell me what needs that I have that maybe I just don't see are being met that aren't being met. Let me say this one last thing before I, I get off this video because I think you're getting the point. But to anybody who says that I'm in an environment that is oppressive, that I have a tyrannical rule, that I'm eventually going to be forced to be a slave, that all I'm doing is I'm working so that way I can give them all the resources so that way they can live high off the hog and, you know, I guess get breadcrumbs. Um... Which another point on that aspect too, okay, I told you that you get, we get $50 a month per person, so I get $150, right? At the end of the year, like last year, at the end of the year, because we did so well with our business, we ended up getting a bonus. So every, I, I got like a $460. And so when all your needs are taken care of, your phone bill's taken care of, your gas, that's another thing I forgot to say, all the gas uh, gets, gets paid for. No matter if I go to the store or, or whatever, I'm not, I'm not the one that's paying for the gas. So I'm not paying for gas, phone bill, uh, the heating, electrical, I don't have any bills and I don't have any debt. I came here with, I think a thousand dollars worth of credit card debt and, and the community paid for that. Elder Kabir paid for that. And so I, I'm, I'm debt free. And so, you know, and I, all these things could be taken as well. They're, they're, those are the carnal things. What about the spiritual oppression that's being happened here? I don't see that either. Everybody who's here, if they need deliverance tonight, it's available. I mean, the word's being preached and it, I don't see the word being preached in a manipulative manner where, you know, like what the slave masters did to the slaves and they only tell them certain parts of the word and they don't want you to go back and look behind what they're saying, lest you find out that what they're telling you is just a manipulation tactic in order to keep you hardworking while you're working for them. It's just, it, this, this whole thing's crazy. But what I wanted to say was, if you think that it's oppressive here, and I read to you all those benefits, if you were to come and save me from this situation, if I went and lived with you, would my situation be better? Can you give me the same life that I have here where you're at? Or if I went back into the world, would my life be better than it is here? Because here... I, I would say the average person does not have $150 to spend on pretty much whatever they want at the end of the month. After they're done paying their, their car note that they're in loan to, their mortgage, their all their insurance bills, their medical stuff, diapers, wipes, clothing for their child, and whatever else expense that an average person has to pay. I don't I don't think they got just like all this cash laying around just to be able to use whatever they want. You know, and I hear other things too, like, well, what happens when we get land like are you gonna have you know, what what what's your inheritance you know my mind said like i'm not concerned about my inheritance here because my inheritance is in new jerusalem i'm a citizen of that kingdom and i'm gonna get my inheritance when i go there i'm just a stranger and a pilgrim here i'm just passing through this is just a testing ground if i can do it here under these certain circumstances i can submit unto somebody who's righteous and do what they tell me and submit. And I can have, I guess, some of my freedom not necessarily be there where I don't get to be the man of my house where I get to make the decisions of what kind of car I'm going to drive and what kind of house I'm going to live in. And I'm going to have this spot of land and I'm going to give it to my uh, seeds and, and their seeds. And I'm going to have this dynasty for myself. I, that, that's not what I'm looking for. My, my kingdom is not here. My kingdom is in the kingdom. 
with the king. That that's what I'm searching for. That's what I'm seeking for. So while I'm here, my my job here is just to to uh, learn sanctification and to be sanctified. And so if I'm in a certain situation where some of these benefits get taken away, you know, it's just part of the sanctification process. Now, if I do see things start to go crazy, where I, I see, you know, some stuff like Jim Jones or Waco or you know, where it's like, I, I know in Waco, the dude was sleeping with everybody's wife and convinced him he was the Lamb of Yah. That's not in the word. So if the leaders are doing things according to the word and I can look at the word and I can back it up and I don't see anything that they're doing where I can look at the word and say, the word says this and you're doing this. I'm fine with trusting in these people. I'm fine with trusting Pastor Dow. I remember Jesus said that some, some guy came up to Jesus and he asked him like, well, what, what's the work that we need to, uh, to, to do to do the works of Yah? And Jesus says, this is the work of Yah, to believe in him who he has sent. And so I know Jesus was talking about himself at that point in time, but I also believe that Pastor Dow has been sent and he feeds us with knowledge and understanding. He feeds us the bread of life, which is when you look at what Jesus was talking to that rabbi about, it was about the same type of thing. And they got offended because he was calling himself the bread of life. But then people get offended because Pastor Dow was feeding us the bread of life and giving us the word of truth. But then they want to say, Pastor Dow was a tyrant. He's just, he's, he's just manipulating you. He's just doing it in order so that way he, he can be a king and you all are going to be the servants. I honestly, I don't even know what to say to that, honestly. Pastor Bell has been nothing but righteous since I've been in this truth. He's he's helped me in, in tons of ways. And me and Pastor Dow don't talk that much. I probably had maybe an hour total conversation with Pastor Dow. But I follow him because I see the fruits and the works that he has. You know, I heard one thing too that uh, somebody said that, well, if if you all of a sudden stop being a benefit to the community, then the community is just going to get rid of you. And my mindset is like, dang, didn't it, didn't Jesus say that? Like, if you're a tree and you're not producing fruit, then what happens to you? If you're a branch and you're not producing fruit, what happens to you? So if I'm part of the body and I'm not producing fruit, why would why would y'all allow that branch to be there? That doesn't make any sense. He said, you're going to cut that off, right? It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I, I really don't have much more to say. I have food. I have raiment. I'm going to be content. Now, there's people out there who want to say that I'm not content or that I shouldn't be content. They want to lure you through the lust of the flesh by saying things like, well, it would be better if you were somewhere else. I don't think so. And I don't think that the people who are saying these things could give me a better life or give me these same benefits or give me the same freedom that I have here or help me in deliverance in the same way that I've been helped here. Ridiculous. Bless y'all.